everybody, Brian Curran here again for another guitar lesson. Thanks for joining me. Sure appreciate it. Thanks to all the subscribers out there. I'm glad you all are uh, finding these lessons helpful. And as I always say, you keep watching them, I'll keep making them. So uh, yeah. So today's session is a little bit based on the last lesson I did by uh, Blind Lemon Jefferson, the Black Snake Moan. Uh, I wanted to dive into some of those guitar ideas that came from that song a little bit more. So this is a little more technique based. Um, catered to beginner to intermediates playing you know maybe getting into country blues um, trying to maybe learn some of these lines by popular artists on your own like Blind Lemon Jefferson or, or uh, Big Bill Brunzi or kind of just make up your own riffs uh, over country blues songs so um, that's what we're gonna focus on today we're gonna use the C major scale we're in standard tuning I'm using a flat pick you certainly don't need to do what's comfortable for you uh, so let's dive right in first we need to get the scale we're going to use the C major scale uh, we're not necessarily just using these notes but it's a springboard for us it's a blueprint or a, a foundation to work from so let's look at the scale uh, very simple going up and then we'll talk about going descending as well uh, so we start on C third finger third fret fifth string open D string the E second fret second finger um, F third fret third finger on four string open G a note second fret second finger open B then the first octave C first finger first fret on the second string and we can continue another octave so so far we got C D E F G A B C it's important to know the notes if you don't know the notes on the guitar already um, not necessary for this particular lesson, but if you don't know them, start to learn them. So again, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. Continuing into the next octave, D, third fret second, open E, first fret first, third fret. That's as far as we're going to go. We could continue the octave here if we want, but we're not going to get that high. We're going to stay in the open position for today's lesson. So C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, continuing next octave, D, E, F, G. And then you can descend that. Just get it under your fingers if you're not familiar with that scale already. Speed is number 10 on your top 10 list. Don't worry about playing fast, not a big deal. Um, and I'm picking down and up. You can do it all down if you like, but uh, getting in, if you're using a flat pick, alternate picking is a good idea so now let's talk about descending it down lower so we could also go C low B on the second string or second fret open A G F E so we could even start there So get those, get to know where those notes are. Get to know the names of them if you can, because um, we're going to talk about a little bit of theory here. I'm not going to dive into too much detail, but there's a couple things that you'll need to know. And knowing the notes, or a couple things that if you don't already know that you'll have to learn, and knowing the notes will make that a whole lot easier. So we could play over our country blues and just use those notes, but it, it wouldn't sound that great. Uh, we want to add a few things to this scale to make it a little more bluesy or some might say a little spicier. Add some notes that give it some color, basically, is what I like to say. Um, we're going to use the flat third, the flat fifth, and the flat seven are the three notes that we're going to add to the scale. So we have to figure out, if you don't know what I'm talking about, figure out what in the world is this guy talking about. The flat third, flat fifth, and the flat seven. Well, it's really quite simple, especially in the open position. It really reveals itself quite easily. And uh, some of these ideas can be related to arpeggios as well. Um, and it can be related to any major scale in any key. Um, but for, to, uh, for the lesson today, we'll just stick with C. But hopefully you can maybe try and transpose some of this to different keys on your own. But don't worry about it. If you can't, if you're having trouble doing that a month from now, just take your time. Let it evolve. You know, don't be in a hurry. So let's talk about what the flat third is first, right? So 
if I start that scale, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, each one of those notes also has a number value. Real simple. First note is, the, is number one, number two, number three, number four, five, six, seven. Finally, eighth is the octave. Really easy. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, or C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. So the third note is the E note. C, D, E, there's the third note. So all I mean by flat third is take the, the E note and play it a half step lower. Or E flat, <clears throat> excuse me. There's your flat third, or some people would call it the minor third. It is the note that makes a major chord minor. If you take the third note, or the third of the chord, or the third of the scale, Flat at a half step, you get a minor chord, but we're not talking about that. We're just kind of using it to spice up our major scale. So now we can add that to it, right? C, D, E flat, E, or D sharp, or flat third. That's kind of what I want you to think of it as. Right? So there's the first note that we're adding to it. The other one is the flat five. So we flat third, we found out that's that's taking the E and playing it a half step down as well. Flat five, that's one, two, three, four, five, the G. So we can add that as well, so that would be here. Can't really add it to the third string without um, uh, tuning the string down, so we don't need to do that. But you can add that now, so you have this whole kind of chromatic run going on the uh, on that four string right the next one we talked about adding was the flat seven so the flat seven B is the seventh note one two three four five six seven so we add a B flat we can find that guy right here on the third fret third string so now we got this not that you would play it this way, but this is where you can learn where some of the notes are. Right? That sounds weird just playing it. I, I totally get that. Uh, playing it as a straight scale. But knowing where some of those notes are, flat third, flat five, flat seven, can spice up some of your runs. But let's continue up the octave and find out where those are again in the next octave. C... D, E flat, flat third, right, to open E, F, F sharp, or G flat, it's the flat five, there's the, the five straight up, now we, the, if we found the flat seven, we'd be going up chromatically on the first string, and again, we're just staying back here, so there they are again, there's the flat third, there's the flat five. Going up. So now, if you want, you can play it all as one single exercise. Right? And then try to, you know, think to yourself where those are. You know, C, D, flat third, flat five, flat seven. And you can see in the intro, I played this run. And I utilized a lot of those ideas, right? And then again, we can find those same notes lower as well. There's the major seven or the B, B flat. There's the flat seven, open A, right? There's the five, flat five. Flat third, we'd have to detune the guitar. So you can put those. You can add those in. That's kind of the idea. And play around with it. Like, here's a great, great idea. Um, and again, I, I don't have any planned riff here. So all this is kind of improvising my way through it. Or just utilizing some of the same ideas that I've learned from listening to my favorite artists and finding out what they do, and then 
you know, I've kind of noticed, oh, that's what that is compared to a major scale or this chord or that chord. Um, so uh, one idea, right? We could do this. You know, I'm just making that up. So I'm starting on that flat third up to the F. You know, just start experimenting with them. I think that's kind of like a, Tony Rice does that a lot. And that's just a chromatic run. You could say that's chromatic, but I, I think of it as just seeing that flat seven, flat five, and, and uh, that sort of thing. Flat five there, flat seven there. That's a nice one. You know, start with that flat seven. But you can hear how that just kind of really makes the major scale pop a little bit, and it fits with with country blues plan. You know, it it would fit great over uh, um, what is Big Bill Burnsy's. You know, a lot of the runs are kind of in that one, but any little old twelve bar country blues thing, or or even a bluegrass kind of thing, this stuff fits over it really well. So. I hope you can get some ideas off of that. Just try and find where they are. Memorize it in C. You can then try to transpose to some different keys. Or you can just, hey, if you're in a different key, play out of C and just move the capo up. You know, if you're just starting out, you're more concerned about playing musically. You know, not necessarily, um, you know, getting into all these different closed positions and movable chord forms and everything. There is absolutely nothing wrong with just really diving into these ideas just out of the C position and if you want to change keys to a different song or or just to get a different sound using the capo nothing wrong with that at all you know for if you're just getting started so I hope that helps you guys and I hope you can generate some ideas from all that you know just see how it pops for you um, one good way of practicing is just sit down and strum a C like I was just doing there and and fiddle just kind of hang off that C chord and strum it every now and then or find a backing track or make up your own backing track things like that so I hope that helps you guys and uh, we'll see you all next time